Hello, welcome back. Uh, lens flares. Yeah, today we're gonna talk about them because uh, they're super important if you want your renders to look realistic and they're one of the best ways to add that like cinematic vibe to your renders. In this video, I'm gonna go into why they're important and if you guys feel like sticking around, I'm gonna share some like dead simple free lens flare node groups that you can just plop into the Blender compositor. I modeled them after real cinematic lenses so they look great and you don't need to know what you're doing. They just like kind of work automatically. And if you just want the lens flares, they're down there, you vultures. So what are lens flares. You probably already know this, but lenses work by taking in light and refracting it through a bunch of glass pieces so that it focuses on a digital film sensor or film in the back of the camera. However, no glass is perfect and a small part of that light, instead of going through all the glass pieces, is reflected and bounced off of uh, the glass pieces inside and just kind of keeps bouncing around until it finally gets to the sensor. Normally you can't see those reflections because the light is relatively dim, but if we're talking about a light source like the sun, which is thousands of times brighter than the shady spot in the scene, then you're gonna notice those internal reflections from that particular point where the sun is. In fact, the lenses in your own eyeballs add artifacts to literally everything you've ever seen. If you go for a walk on a dark night and look up into a street lamp, there's gonna be some glare. I mean, I hope so. Either that or I have an astigmatism I don't know about. But yeah, it's not going to look like a 3D render where the only bright parts are exactly where the emissive materials are. Um, it should look kind of like this. So if not a single human being has ever looked at a street lamp without it glaring into their eyes, why are we posting renders without glare on the street lamps? Webcams, iPhones, DSLRs, uh, cinema cameras, even your eyeballs, as I talked about, all produce lens flares of some sort. If we take a close look at the camera in our Blender scene, you'll notice it looks a little bit different than say this camera right here. There are a few differences, believe it or not. Can you tell Can you tell me what they are? Probably the biggest one is that the Blender camera doesn't actually have any physical glass in front of it. There's no way for bright light to flare out and capture all those realistic imperfections that literally every other way of capturing a 3D scene has like baked into it. And so if you want your renders to look like they were shot with a real camera, we gotta fake that. Which of course leads me to uh, easy lens flares. Um, these are the procedural lens flares that I made for the Blender compositor. Uh, and this is the blend file specifically that uh, you can download in the description. Yeah, I'm just gonna get into rendered mode here and the viewport compositor should be on, yeah. So yeah, we've got four lens flares here. Um, for all of them, I referenced real cinematic lenses, mostly from this video by Pasta Matt. Thank you, Pasta Matt. So this first one is the Cook Anamorphic lens flare. This one's really good for like sci-fi scenes. You can just like crank the flare strength and uh, yeah, just get those huge wide kind of blurry flares going on. Or if you want, you can dial it back and just kind of give your give your scenes a bit more of a realistic down to earth cinematic vibe. Only barely noticeable. Have it like there or something like that. People will feel it more than notice it. And then next is the Minolta 50 millimeter. This one's the most subdued of the bunch. Uh, there's some nice halos that uh, recede once the light source gets to the middle of the of the flare. Um, it just kind of adds a little bit more movement when the, the light is going around. I'd use this one probably for like daylight shots, just to add like a little bit of haze and a little bit of that flare effect, but uh, nothing too crazy, you know? All right, and the third one is the Super Takumar. Let's pop it in there. Uh, this one's just like a really good all around kind of flare. I just like it. It's like really pleasing. It's got a nice glare. It's got nice little orbs here. This big uh, kind of yellow ring. I feel like it's just a good one. Lastly, we have the Mer 1 37 millimeter. Let's just get that. This one's just kind of gritty. Uh, it has this huge flare that kind of covers most of the frame. It's got some extra like gold flares that uh, that flare out sometimes when the light gets super intense like that. Yeah, that's what that one looks like. And to use these things, you see there's only two sliders. I really want to make them easy to use. So like anyone can use them and they just kind of work. This top one is the light threshold. That's uh, how bright the light needs to be to before it starts flaring out. The default highlight threshold is 20. And as you can see here with this cube, we have an emissive surface of 30. So 30 is higher than 20, so it's gonna, it's gonna emit. But if we bring this up and bring it past 30, you can see it uh, no longer affects it. So it's just kind of like a luma key. And the bottom slider is pretty self-explanatory. That is the flare strength. So it just adds the flare over top of the base image. So we can bring it really, really down if we want it more subtle, or we can bring it like way up if we want some crazy flares. Um, the default of one is honestly like a little strong, so I'd probably dial that back in most of your renders, but yeah. In the default blend file, I also just packed a few like renders that I did that I used to show them off. Okay, now let's try out this UFO one. So I'll just 
put that there. Yeah, that's that's a UFO for sure. So installation, um, we've been looking at the blend files you get with the download, but let's get these lens flares installed so you can use them anytime in any of your projects. So obviously you're gonna start with a link in the description it brings you to the Gumroad page. Following Blender's open source ethos, I'm giving the flares away by donation. That means uh, if these help your renders in any way, maybe you can help my meager bank account by chipping in five, 10, $20, uh, cause they did take me a few weeks to, to put together. Once that's downloaded, launch Blender and make sure you're using at least Blender uh, 4.2. All right, from here we are gonna click File, append, search your download folder and find the easy lens flares dot blend blender blend file. Inside of that, we are gonna find no tree. We're gonna double click on that. And then all these ones with the lens flare underscore something, we're just gonna shift click, select all those and then click append. Finally, we're gonna go to file, default, <laughs> save startup file. So once you click that, then those lens flares should be there. Uh, anytime you open a new blend file. If you just want to add the flares to an existing file you have, just do all that and don't do the save default file. Now to actually use them, let's make an icosphere in our blend scene. I'll raise it up, I'll make it really small. That's gonna be our, our highlight. I'm just gonna give it a quick mesh highlight and give it an emission of, again, let's just do 30. So we'll see this. Yes, very, very bright, very bright icosphere. Okay, once you got that, we are gonna go over to the compositing workspace. And once we're here, we're gonna hit Shift A to add a new node and under group down here, we will find all the lens flares. So let's just add, uh, let's add the anamorphic lens flare here. You can just pop it in there. Also, while we're here, uh, press N to go into the N menu and then under options, change the device from CPU to GPU. That'll just make your renders render in like a second instead of a full minute. And that's why we were using Blender 4.2 because it makes these renders actually viable. It doesn't add an extra like minute or two to your renders for every frame. And yeah, now we should be basically good to go. If we will go back to the layout tab to our 3D viewport, um, if we're in rendered mode here, we can click the drop down and the viewport compositor we can put on always, and we should see our lens flare. And if we want to render this, just uh, center up the camera. I'm using control alt zero to, to do that. And then I'm going to press F12 to render. It'll render, take a second and then it'll composite. There we go. Easy, easy peasy. And yeah, that is basically it. Um, there's just a few like best practices, I guess I wanna go over. So yeah, the first thing you gotta know is they only work with like real emissive things that the camera can actually see. They don't work with normal blender lights. So yeah, if I make a blender light, a uh, little point light here, I'll throw it here. Let's turn it up to like 90 million. Well, if I, uh, if I center just the light, you don't see anything. Um, and that's because the lights don't actually emit any light rays into the camera. They just reflect off of things. So you're gonna see a, uh, you're gonna see lens flares off this super, super bright cube because it's being emitted by the sun, basically. That's why I add the little icosphere in the scene because we need something that's actually bright that we can see for the compositing trick to take effect. A little tip, if you don't want your emissive icosphere to affect anything else in the scene, all you gotta do is go down to the object properties, this little, uh, box here and under visibility, you're just gonna deselect all these ray visibility things that aren't the camera. So it's only visible to the camera. That's all we really need. Another thing is that the lens flares work actually pretty well with uh, with HDRIs, but you gotta choose the right one. It has to kind of make sense. So I have this one open right now. And as you can see, it's kind of like a really rainy overcast uh, day at a church top. And if I lower this until we start seeing something, you can see we do get lens flares, but they're just from whatever the brightest part of the image is, and they don't look very realistic. That's because it they're supposed it's supposed to be like a tiny, tiny point of light, like the sun or like a very tiny reflection or a big lamp or something like that. And also it wouldn't really make sense to have a lens flare on a overcast day like this anyway, because there isn't like a big bright light. See, I'm like all the way down to 1.2. So instead let's find one maybe like this that has a single bright point. And we'll look around, try and find the sun. There it is. And as you can see, since there's one very, very bright light, it works pretty well. And we can actually crank this, this threshold and uh, really kind of dial that in. HDRIs that have the sun in them like that have a crazy high threshold range. So you can really, really crank this and uh, Maybe not that high, I guess. Something you can kind of do with these is uh, when the sun is obscured by an object in front of it, you can kind of see there's like a bit of an, like that animation. Oh, the bright light is, whoa. 
and like all the all these kind of orbs like they get smaller and then bigger yeah i just think that's kind of cool yeah another thing you can do is um in certain scenes some parts of the lens flare don't really come through that well so if you want you can click on the node group press tab to go see the inner workings of it. The way I made it, it's like pretty basic, honestly. You just like have all the individual elements and then I have them going into a big mixer at the end here. If you want more green mirror streaks, cause you can't really see them that well, you just crank them up and you can see that part got a little bit brighter. I kind of use my own terminology here, but you can probably use trial and error to figure it out. So all in all, um, I'm really happy with these lens flares. I'm really happy to share them with you guys. I've been wanting to make a pack of these for myself anyway, for like a million years, but you probably should know a couple of their limitations because there, there definitely are a few. So yeah, if you look at reference of real lens flares, you'll notice that the flare starts before the light source even enters the lens's view. However, with these flares, since they all happen in the compositor, the camera has to be looking at a bright light source for them to trigger. What I'm saying is they're limited to the screen space. If you wanted to counteract this and get technically a little bit more of a real realistic lens flare, you could render at a higher resolution and a wider camera angle. Another thing, just with the way that light works in Blender, these flares don't really do well with like moving far away to close to the light source. The size of the light source really affects kind of how much light energy is in there. So you can see if as we get closer, it just kind of gets like more and more and more and so intense. And then if we get further away, it just gets like a lot smaller until it just kind of like goes away. But honestly, other than that, I really don't think there's too much wrong with them. Um, if you have a decent system, they work pretty well in real time in the viewport compositor as I have been showing you. Um, and they're really good for previewing your work in Eevee to make them look even cooler. So yeah, if this video or these flares helped you out in any way, uh, maybe give me a like and subscribe. Uh, if you want, throw a comment down there. Tell me what you're working on. I like knowing what you guys are doing. Also, if you guys are into any of the more like ethical uh, social media sites, I am on Mastodon and PureTube at uh, mastodon.art and makertube.net respectively. So you can go find me at those places as well. And yeah, I hope you guys like the flares and get some good use out of them.